We're about to brave minus 20 to get our hands on the oldest Antarctic ice in the world, in Cambridge, in a freezer. So in this box here, we have some very, very special ice. If I can get it open, we have the very oldest ice that was collected uh, for Beyond Epica. Can we lift some of it up very yes, carefully? Yes. As I lift this, I'm thinking about the countless hours that people have put into yeah. to get in this. James Veal was part of the multinational European team who spent four years painstakingly drilling into the Antarctic ice sheet, boring down 2.8 kilometers. I noticed there are some bubbles in here, but in some of the older ones, there's almost no bubbles at all. Yeah, when you get this deep, the pressure from the ice is so great that the, those, those air bubbles get smaller and smaller and smaller and compressed until when you get to the very bottom, you can't see them at all. Well, wow. but it's still there and we can still analyze it. But... That's where Dr. Liz Thomas comes in. Her team will be working 15 hours a day for seven weeks to slowly melt the ice. And what you're hearing is the sound of history bubbling to life. The analysis is done next door. So what you're watching coming through these little tubes here, and you can see the bubbles as they go over the pumps, that's that meltwater from the ice core on the other side of the wall. And the air that's inside that ice that hasn't been around for, exposed for millions of years. No, that is what I think is staggering. So when we were in there and we were watching it melt and those bubbles were being released, that is air that's been locked away for potentially a million years, maybe even a million and a half years. By analysing that meltwater, the team can measure impurities from things like volcanic eruptions, temperatures from the past and gases in the air. We know with a huge degree of certainty that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today is higher than it has been in the past 800,000 years. What we're going to explore is how did that carbon dioxide change beyond that period? And that may be able to answer the vital question of why temperature fluctuations between ice ages became more extreme a million years ago and slowed from happening every 41,000 years to every 100,000 years. If we can understand that, we've got a better chance of predicting how our planet will change in the future. Martin Stew, ITV News, Cambridge.